I'd like to thank the Brain Foundation, the Scientific Advisory Committee and all the donors and sponsors as well. Um, my research interest is on a condition that most of you probably haven't heard of and it has a really long name. It's called syringomyelia but it's basically two, two Greek words that are put together. It comes from the word syrinx, which means tube, and mylos, which means marrow, which refers to the spinal cord. So it's really a condition where you've got fluid-filled cysts in the spinal cord. And as these cysts enlarge, they cause damage to the surrounding spinal cord tissue, and this can cause pain and paralysis. People with traumatic spinal cord injury can develop this. Up to one third of people with a spinal cord injury um, can develop one of these cysts. And you can imagine that in a person with some disability, but who's relatively independent, how devastating it would be for them to then need um, to develop further paralysis and need assistance with uh, daily tasks. Um, at the moment, there's only surgery to treat this condition and it's usually involving a way to release the pressure that the cyst places on the spinal cord. But outcomes from surgery aren't great. And that's in large part because we don't really understand why it forms, why it enlarges, and we don't understand when it does resolve exactly why it does in some people, but not in, in others. And our research group is uniquely placed to try and de tackle this problem. I work as part of a collaborative project, which is headed by Professor Studley, who's a neurosurgeon, and Professor Lynn Bilston, who's a biomechanical engineer. And our group is made up of engineers and <coughs> clinicians and scientists like myself. And we meet regularly and we have these really interesting meetings where Prof Studley might um, talk about one of his cases and bring in images of, like, cases of patients before surgery and after surgery, and then we all bring our unique perspective to these cases. The engineers focus on the mechanics and the hydrodynamics of the fluid within the spinal cord, and scientists like myself tend to zoom in on the smaller things and look at what's happening, things that you can't see with the naked eye. Um, and through these discussions, we've realised that there's actually a lot of basic things that we don't understand. Everyone here would know that the brain and spinal cord is surrounded by a fluid, which we call cerebrospinal fluid, or CSF. But in, and we know that it's likely that the CSF is somehow getting into the spinal cord and producing this cyst. But we don't even know the exact anatomical pathways that this fluid moves from the CSF through the tissue to form the cyst and we don't know the driving forces behind this. And that's what this project is focusing on. And it's part of a larger project, um, which will hopefully be funded by the NHMRC, um, which uses clinical um, imaging of patients before and after surgery, computational modeling, and lab-based work. And all of these in conjun conjunction, we're hoping, will lead to better surgical decision making <coughs> and in the long run, hopefully develop um, treatments for this condition that don't involve surgery. So thanks again to the Brain Foundation for supporting this.